this is Mitch Hauschel, Maximum Training Solutions. We're talking today about when mobility restrictions aren't really a mobility restrictions. And uh, we talk a lot about mobility and stability, how they're all, they're both very necessary for, uh, you know, really pure authentic movement, especially for athletes, uh, for keeping them healthy and also increase, increasing performance. Uh, it's also very important for just general population as well. Uh, with, with the level of activities of, of our general population now, uh, for a lot of our clients that we see, it's really important that we address both mobility and stability. So um, the problem is a, a lot of times we have people come to us and we may test them in, a, in uh, some sort of a, a mobility, like a sit and reach or something like that. Um, and we think it's really a mobility issue, um, but a lot of times it actually ends up being a stability issue. So. Um, what am I really talking about here, uh, especially when we talk about the, uh, my latest blog post where we look at uh, how do we increase flexibility without actually stretching and, and that comes down to identifying what's really a mobility issue and what's a stability issue and then uh, improving whichever, whichever one is, is the true cause of the issue. So a really easy uh, one to, p to pick up is um, a lot of times with this toe touch. Okay, so. Um, if I have uh, if I have her go ahead and try to touch her toes, so go ahead and turn and face me. What you'll see is a lot of people. You say touch your toes, they can't touch your toes. So go ahead. Um, notice she can only get so far here. Okay, so she can't give me a full good toe touch um, and doesn't have a great hip hinge here. Now if I put her on the floor, let's go ahead and hop down the floor for me, and I ask her to touch her toes. Uh, what you'll see here is. She can definitely touch her toes. Okay, so the question is that a mobility or a stability issue? Well, I can argue very easily that that's a stability issue because when she's standing, she's got gravitational forces against her. When she's sitting, it's really just looking at uh, at, at actually her hamstring and her hip mobility. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is mobility restrictions are consistent all the time. So no matter whether they're standing, seated, or, or any different movement, it will always appear the same. If we start to see the same motion in different planes and in different gra gravitational forces and, and uh, situations, um, and they're changing, then it's a pretty good idea it's a stability issue. But mobility will always be consistent. So for her, the question is how do we improve that toe touch? It's real simple. We need to increase proximal stability to give us some more distal mobility. Okay? So three uh, easy exercises that I really like for doing this, uh, for increasing that proximal stability. I like to start with uh, tall kneeling around the world. So I'm going to have her grab a, a, a core USB and she's going to go tall kneeling. So on both knees, uh, she's going to use uh, the handles on the, on the ends actually and she's going to get nice and tall, squeeze her glutes and she's going to give me a nice tight around the world. Okay, Real slow control and obviously we can play with tempo here a lot. Um, and, and she can actually pick this up a little bit more than the tempo she's at right now or we can go slow and control, whatever she's comfortable with. What I really want her to focus on is keeping that sandbag nice and uh, tight to her body as she goes through this. So this is a great core and trunk stability exercise because it's really challenging stability uh, in a whole lot of different planes. We can go both directions. We can also go half kneeling uh, as she gets better at it. Okay. So the next exercise that uh, we're going to talk about is a standing march, overhead march. So she's going to grab that power USB and I'm going to have her press it up over her head so she's balancing, um, she's balancing on her fists. So she's going to go ahead and press it up over her head and so from here she's just going to go into a nice alternating march. Okay? Looks really simple but don't underestimate this exercise. This is a really, really powerful exercise. Remember anything, anytime we put that uh, USB up over her head, her inner unit of her core has got to turn on. So now we're teaching this proximal stability, give her that distal mobility, and we're really teaching dissociation between the upper body and the lower body. Okay? And then the final exercise we're going to talk about here is just a, a carry. And I love carries of all different uh, sizes, forms, fashions, um, using different ultimate sandbags, throwing some kettlebells in there, whatever else you have. Um, carries are great because they're really just a moving plank. So we're going to go here, front loaded. I'm going to have her really uh, tuck her hips underneath her, try to close that scissor, uh, that scissor posture she has a tendency to get. Go ahead and face me. And we're just going to walk back and forth. Okay. Um, so go ahead and walk forward and then turn around and go back the other direction. Okay. So obviously we can really mix this up as far as our, our tempo and the distance and she can do a lot of different things here. 
Okay. So just three real bright, uh, easy, brief exercises that you can use when we're looking at this uh, increasing the proximal stability to give us that distal mobility. Um, but the key really is recognizing when a mobility restriction is really a mobility restriction. Great tool for that is our DVRT corrective course. We've got a, a great evaluation tool in there that's going to help you evaluate movement and then a full corrective uh, course based off of that evaluation tool. So check that out. Um, also uh, look at uh, my website if you've got any other questions, www.maximumtrainingsolutions.com.